Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Audrey from Audrey Approved. I'm going to do the book recommendations tag today, which is uh, a series of questions that I've been seeing going around uh, booktube lately. And they're, they're a fun set of questions. Uh, I've been really enjoying seeing what other people have to say. And I've actually found quite a few new people through, you know, tracing back tag videos. So I hope you enjoy and I'll jump right in. First up, we have a book that you tell people is your favorite which is a very interesting way of, of wording a uh, favorites question. And I appreciate it because it's not asking for a universal favorite, it's just a book you tell people. And so a book that I have recently told people that is my favorite uh, is a book that I read at the end of last year, so the end of 2022. It was my favorite nonfiction book of 2022. It's The Emerald Mile by Kevin Fidarko. And this is a book that is about river rafting, in particular river rafting, the section of the Colorado River that is, you know, within the Grand Canyon. And, you know, even beyond that, it's a story of, of American history, it's a story of engineering, it's a story of, uh, of sport and of, of nature. And so I think if you like any of those elements in books, and you also like narrative nonfiction, you might like this as well. It's also inspired me to one day make my own river rafting trip uh, down the Colorado. I'm not quite sure when that'll happen, but I do want to do it. And so yeah, I think lately when people ask me what is my favorite book, this is the answer that I give. Next up is a book that is your guilty pleasure. And I think maybe before I answer this, I'll just say that when I was younger, when I was a tween, I was never that into like boy bands, but I was wholly obsessed with Legolas from Lord of the Rings. And at one point I even had like a full-sized or a real life-sized cardboard cutout of Orlando Bloom as Legolas in my room. Um, and so with that being said, my guilty pleasure is romance books and in particular where the female lead is human. <laughs> you know where this is going. And the male lead is basically an elf. It can be a fae, it could be a fairy, it can be an alien, as long as they seem like an elf in the book, I'm pretty much down for it. So to give some context, uh, you know, what are some books like this that I've enjoyed in the past? I've really enjoyed the Samara series by Sharon Chin, which is humans with, with angels. Uh, but there's a bit of like a sci-fi level to it. So this is, I think, geared towards a younger audience, um, but I, I used to love that series. Uh, I really like the books by Sarah J Maas that have to do with two characters getting together for the first time. I think Sarah J Maas is super hyped up on booktube and while I don't love her politics, her world building, her battle scenes, I do think she is a master of romantic tension and romantic build up and so I really enjoyed uh, A Court of Silver Flames. That one was five stars. It was wonderful. Um, and then in terms of like sci-fi and space operas, I've also really enjoyed uh, Rules of Redemption by, I think it's T.A. White, and I've enjoyed um, the Consortium Rebellion series, I think is what it's called. It starts with, I think, Eclipse the Moon by Jesse Malik. And these are both space operas where, again, human female lead and a male lead that is an alien, but an alien with pointed ears. And so he's basically like a space elf. Um, and so a book that I have really enjoyed recently that I think is like a guilty pleasure that also falls into this category is um, by Carissa Broadbent. It's like the, oh, oh man, uh, I don't know if it's a court, a court of serpent and wings, something with, something with serpent and wings. Um, but it's basically a human with a vampire, but the vampire has pointed ears. So it's basically like, you know, a dark elf. Um, and I thought this was so much fun. I binge read it. I finished it at like 5 a.m. on a vacation and I just had a, had a great time with it. So those are my guilty pleasure books. I'm not ashamed of it. I think they're a lot of fun. And you know what? Based on the popularity of, of all of these books, I think a lot of other people enjoy it as well. So if you have recommendations for this specific guilty pleasure, let me know. For a book you love that everybody didn't, I have two hot takes. The first is that I don't really like Agatha Christie books. I know that some people find them nostalgic, but I don't know, they're kind of boring for me and they feel very dated. And so I've tried, I think, two or three of them. I don't really like any of them, so uh, I'm not going to try any more. And then the other hot take I have is that I don't really like Dune by Frank Herbert. And I like, I want to be a Dune fan, but I'm just, I, I, I really don't like the exposition, I think. At least in the first half of the book before I, before I DNF'd it. I've recently been told that I should try the audiobook, and so I might try this before I guess the second half of, of the film comes out. But yeah, as it stands right now, I'm not a Dune fan. 
It was very easy for me to answer a book that I read the fastest, that is Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. This is the very first book by John Krakauer I ever read. And I distinctly remember reading this book because I was on a hike and I put, I started the audiobook like partway through the hike. You can even see like the trail that I was on when I was listening to this. Um, I listened to it for the rest of my hike, got in the car, drove home, listened to the book, ate some food, listened to the book, downloaded the ebook from the library, then sat in bed and finished it. So I think I read all of Into Thin Air in like five or six hours. And this is a memoir about Krakauer's time climbing Mount Everest and um, you know, his expedition had a big disaster. There were some deaths in it. And so uh, I was just uh, really entranced by Krakauer's writing, but also just trying to figure out what, what was gonna happen. So this is a book that I completely binged uh, in multiple formats and I uh, don't remember reading a book this fast almost ever. <laughs> For a book that deserves more hype, I have Cosmic Comics by Italo Calvino and in particular Cosmic Comics like the abridged version rather than the complete Cosmic Comics which is like you know a whole bunch more stories. Anyway, this is a collection of short stories by Italo Calvino who is an Italian author. He's he's quite famous um, but he's well known for having these like whimsical stories and, and his stories are sometimes uh, set up as like almost fables in, in a certain way and I have only ever seen one other person talk about Cosmic Comics on booktube and I'm pretty sure he didn't like it <laughs> but I think for the right person this is an amazing read, and obviously I am the right type of person, but this is a collection of short stories that is all based on a certain, like each chapter has a certain scientific fact. And then Calvino uses this fact and he builds a story around it. And so they're very, uh, they're very sciencey and nerdy, but not in like the Ted Chang kind of way, although Ted Chang has you know, excellent short stories. You should absolutely check out Ted Chang's collections if you haven't. But Cosmic Comics, I think it's called Cosmic Comics, not because it's laugh out loud funny, but because it doesn't take itself seriously. And so there are characters in here where their names are mathematical formula. So then you've got f of x or function of x as a character. You've got cellular creatures that fall in love with each other. You have um, a story about dinosaurs, a story about um, two characters, one that is aquatic and one that is terrestrial, that uh, are having romantic problems, but you know it's it's meant to to cover you know the idea that we moved from aquatic to terrestrial uh, evolutionarily. And so yeah, I just think they're so much fun. I absolutely love Cosmic Comics. I think they're just so witty and so fun. I have read this book uh, many many times in the past, and so this is uh, a book that I think deserved more hype. And it's also it probably would make like a top 10 book for me a uh, list if I had to make like a top 10 books of all time. So I really love this book and you should check it out if anything that I just said sounded intriguing. For a book that is becoming a movie or TV show soon, I actually have Space Man of Bohemia by Jaroslav Kalfar, which is coming out on Netflix in 2024 as a film. And this is a book that I read for this global reading project that I've been doing. Uh, it's a book for um, the Czech Republic and it is about a man who goes to space and this is not a spoiler, uh, it's in the book blur, but he has these long philosophical conversations with this giant spider. I just think it could make a good, it could make a good movie. I did hear, I think somewhere that Adam Sandler is starring in it, which is different than the vibes that I thought we were going to go for, for this book, but I am very intrigued to see what this adaptation will look like. For a book that I've reread the most, that would be Some 40 Tales from the Afterlife by David Eagleman. It's a really short book. It's only maybe 150 pages. Um, and this is actually very frequently compared to Calvino. So if you liked Cosmic Comics, if you've read it, then you might like Some as well. And I read it for the very first time on my 20th birthday in a single setting, which is not actually how I recommend reading this. I recommend reading just a few pages at a time. It is a collection of 40 stories, again, very short that are all different hypothetical versions of the afterlife, but it's not super, I guess, religious as you might anticipate from the title. It's all about, you know, here and now. It's about uh, the human condition. So in one example, you know, people don't die until they are forgotten for the very first time. So you're kind of put into this hallway where you meet all these famous people whose histories have been kind of taken away from them and they're left in this purgatory before they can actually get to the afterlife. In another version, you um, are not compared against other people, you're compared against other versions of yourself. 
Uh, so if you've made different decisions, uh, how would that impact how you viewed your version of yourself in the afterlife? And so, like I said, these are all, they're all about, you know, how we live our lives now. And I think that they are, they are wonderful. There's some, there are duds, but there are some that I think about even now all the time. And I'll go to my shelf and I'll read like three or four pages and I'll be like, yeah, I love that story. You know, there's no deep exposition or deep dive into certain characters. These are just almost like vignettes and situations that make you think and then you kind of put it down and you, you know, go about your day. This next one I had a bit of trouble with. It is a book from a genre that you don't typically read, but then I guess the this, this tag is called the book recommendation set tag. So I also want to be able to recommend the book. So for example, I can think of like, I don't usually read thrillers. And so I read Whale Fall recently. I didn't like it. And then I've also read um, Tender is the Flesh, which is horror, body horror, psychological horror. Didn't like it. Made me really uncomfortable. I actually DNF'd it, although I kind of want to try it again. But those are examples of genres that I don't normally read and I ended up not really liking uh, the books, but there is a subgenre of nonfiction that in the past I have avoided, but uh, I found a book that I do really like from the subgenre. So that is, I guess, religious history, uh, but from secular authors. So I read Heaven and Hell, uh, a history of uh, the, the afterlife by Bart Ehrman. Um, maybe it was last year, maybe it was a year before, but this was the first book that I ever read that is just like a religious history. And this is extremely dense. It is, you know, it quotes a lot of scripture. It quotes uh, a lot of, a lot of different stuff. And so what I liked about this is that first of all, the author is very obvious up front with his beliefs. And then secondly, it's a history of how we as a civilization have thought about heaven and hell, although it's mainly focused through the lens of Christianity. Um, but it's not just like how we view the history of it standing now in the 2020s, it's how our view of it has changed over time. So what would someone think about heaven of hell at the turn of, you know, 2000 years ago, and then, you know, 100 years later, how would people have, how would people think about it? How would that have changed? And so I really love history books that tell us not only what happened, but what people at the time thought about the, the events that are being covered. Anyway, I really like this. I do want to read more uh, Bart Ehrman, but it's also added more, I would say, secular religious histories to my radar. I really want to read uh, the Christian deconstruction of the classical world. I think that's what it's called. Um, there's also a new book about the history of Rome through the history of popes that I think is coming out soon that I also really want to read. So this is an example of a subgenre I don't normally read, but now I do. A book that absolutely deserves all the hype it gets is A Project Hail Mary by Andy Ware. You know, Andy Ware does single solo men in space that are scientists, uh, that are stubborn, um, very well. And so this is another example of it. The Martian was really good. I really liked uh, Project Hail Mary. In particular, there is a, a secondary character that I just absolutely loved. So I blazed through Project Hail Mary. It is very well loved in the sci-fi community. It's also maybe the most recommended book I ever see on the r slash books subreddit online. Everybody is always recommending Project Hail Mary. Um, and yeah, I think if you haven't read it and you like sci-fi, then check it out. A book you usually recommend when you're asked to give a recommendation is a book that I recommended in a recent recommendation video in my uh, audiobooks recommendation video. It is The Summer That Melted Everything by Tiffany McDaniels, which is one of the most atmospheric reads I've ever come across, especially in audiobook format. This is a gothic coming of age story set in rural Ohio, and it's got not magical realism, but I guess maybe a little bit of it, but it's uh, a really kind of heartbreaking read, but I just love this author's uh, writing style. It's so poetic and again, so atmospheric. So this is a book that I like to recommend as much as I can. And uh, I will say it again, you should absolutely check it out in audiobook format if uh, anything about it seems interesting. A book that has my favorite character is actually Lyriel by Garth Nix. And this is uh, a rare occasion of a YA book that I have read as an adult and absolutely loved. Like there's a lot of YA fantasy that I read when I myself was a YA uh, that I do love and I continue to love 
mostly for nostalgic region, reasons. Um, but this is a series, it's the Porson series um, that I consumed as an adult and I totally ate it up. And in particular, this second installment of the series has a character named Lyriel who I just think is really cool. I would want to be friends with her, like I would want to be her. I think she's really interesting. And she has a sidekick called, I think, the Disreputable Dog, which I think is a great name. And so yeah, I I really love those two characters. Um, and this is a really, it's a really good book. It's got a very unique magic system. I think it's very appropriate for the fall actually, because it's got like necromancy and, and the dead and stuff like that in it. But yeah, I love Lyriel as a character. I want to be her. <laughs> For a book that I wish I could live in, that would be Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Not only because Legolas lives in Middle-earth, but also because it just seems fun. You know, I want to visit the Shire, I want to visit uh, all the different kind of elven fortresses, although it might be nice to visit uh, Middle-earth in like the Second Age or the First Age. Um, I would want to visit Kazak Doom in all of its glory, and so yeah, I, I definitely want to visit Middle Earth, and then uh, a book that you thought you would hate but ended up loving. Hate is a strong word, but a, a book that I thought that I would dislike is The Boys in the Boat by Daniel James Brown. Even though I really like this author, and he is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, nonfiction authors, I had almost no desire in this because I did not care at all about rowing, <laughs> college rowing. Uh, and so this is about um, a group of rowers at the University of Washington, and I think the 1930s, 1936 maybe, as they compete in the Berlin Olympics uh, right before World War II. Uh, I didn't think I would like this, but I had like three co-workers recommend it. I think my dad recommended it. And uh, lo and behold, I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. I think it's a wonderful book. And I think it is also getting made into a film, which should be, uh, should be pretty good. Two final questions. A book that made you cry. I cried at the ending of Endurance by Alfred Lansing, which is all about um, Shackleton and his uh, the disaster that occurred with his ship, the Endurance, um, and this kind of, it's the ultimate adventure story, the ultimate nonfiction adventure story. And I cried with relief at the end, as, as the final pages, uh, as I turned the final pages, I just remember the tears streaming down my cheeks. Um, I don't, I do not cry very often uh, in books, and so this is a rare occasion where I do remember it, and I think it goes, it goes to say just how much and just how engrossing the storytelling was uh, in this book. It is a, a wonderful, a wonderful classic. If you haven't checked it out, you absolutely should. And then finally, a book that I wish I could read for the very first time again, and that would be Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. I just think that, you know, there's a certain amount of trust the reader always puts uh, in an author when they pick up a book. A trust that they will tell a good story, trust that they will deliver you to where you need to be in terms of understanding. And you know, when I first picked up Piridisi, like many people, I thought to myself, what the fuck is this? You know? I don't understand this. What is happening? Who are these characters? And it is, uh, you know, this trust in the author that really keeps you reading and keeps you, keeps you uh, watching as the story slowly unfolds. And so I think you know, you're never going to get that experience again on a reread. I have reread this book and it's a much, much different uh, reading experience to the first time. And so I wish that I could read it again for the first time because I think it is uh, a wonderful book. And I know it's a little bit divisive, but uh, I just think it's super creative and one of my favorites of, of the last few years. That's a wrap on the book recommendation tag. I think it's a fun set of questions. So if you have uh, any interest in answering these questions, consider yourself tagged, even if you don't have a booktube channel, you just wanna answer them yourself. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope it gave you maybe another glimpse into uh, my reading taste and I hope you all are doing well. Take care, I'll see you next time, bye.